Welcome, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Psychor Water Cooler, the casual conversation podcast dedicated to covering all things related to Psychor product updates, full site builds, suggestions and insights, getting the most out of your Psychor investment, and more. I'm your host, John Price, Psychor Practice Director and MVP at AmericanEagle.com. To set the stage for today and piggybacking off a few of our previous episodes, the digital world's changes have been accelerated by the events of the past one and a half years. The trends include employees to work remotely or at least some type of hybrid, B2B customers now expecting to not have to interact face-to-face for orders and reorders. The world has simply gone the way of more touchless and faceless interactions, which obviously greatly influences how companies need to adapt their digital web properties and strategies for helping their customers, prospects, and employees on how to digest content and to purchase products. Enter platforms like Sitecore, Salesforce, and others that have capabilities for content, personalization, and A-B testing. However, they all have similar gaps in their stack, which is search, machine learning, and chatbots. With these digital changes occurring, more functions are going to need to be accessed digitally. Organizations need to address the gap so relevant content can be found. We know roughly one-third of website users are categorized as searchers. To address this gap of search and machine learning in these tech stacks, today we're going to talk specifically about a technology that is a leader in this arena on the Magic Quadrants, Coveo. Coveo is a fantastic option to become the solution to address the gaps of the digital experience platforms and organizations' technology stacks. I am very excited for today's episode as I am joined at the water cooler by J.C. Dumont from Coveo. I have had the pleasure of working with J.C. during his tenure at Coveo. J.C. works with Coveo as an account executive and has been with Coveo for five plus years. J.C. has more than 10 years of experience in the vast field of IT, having specialized in website search projects on numerous platforms, including Sitecore. At Coveo, J.C. first focused on Sitecore customers and helping them achieve success, followed by a recent switch to the world of sales, which he now focuses on helping people solve problems and use cases on a daily basis. J.C., welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, John. Great. And JC, I know we have worked together for quite a while. We're both very familiar with the Coveo as a product. But, you know, JC, for those that are not familiar with Coveo, tell us a little bit more about the product and how organizations can leverage it. Sure thing. At Coveo, we actually consider ourselves a relevance platform and not just a search engine. And the way that our mission is really to convey the right information to the right people at the right time. Often, we also say that we like to democratize the Google or the Amazon level of experience you get from search, but also other types of interactions. And a search is definitely a, a mean to an end for us to achieve this purpose. We've developed different ways, different channels to convey this information over time, uh, including recommendations. You've talked about chatbots, uh, other ways like that. So it goes to our, our core mission is really around that uh, relevant experience and information sharing. We've been in business for about the 16 years at this point. We started off with enterprise search, so mostly around employee portals, intranets, focusing on uh, integrating SharePoint content. uh, And we've evolved over time to um, grow and expand our offer into other areas. Example, with our COVID for Sitecore product, which we're going to talk a bit about today, the Salesforce. We're not the system of engagement per se, but our purpose is to connect the dots between each one of them and to essentially, again, offer that rich search and recommendation uh, experience to the end user in an admin-friendly interface and uh, platform. That's great. I definitely think you guys have the distinct challenge, especially when clients that are on site core or searching for a DXP platform, their C-levels are always like, hey, we want Google. And that's a pretty tall mm-hmm. challenge to be up against. Yep. So it's interesting, especially when they've already purchased a platform like Sitecore or Salesforce, right? These aren't cheap platforms, right? They have a very mm-hmm. tall licensing cost per year, which kind of leads me into the first topic for today, which is Coveo has these specific use cases on platforms like Sitecore. So why would an organization choose Coveo over, say, like Solar on Sitecore? The reality is that a lot of clients actually try out search on their own with Solar and other uh, open source solutions because a lot of people think that search is very easy to accomplish. We don't really think about search uh, that often when deploying a massive project, and that's okay. You know, it's we, we understand that we're a piece in an overall bigger portrait that is a, a full site for implementation. But essentially, the in many instances, we're looped in when people realize that you know they're sitting on this a vast amount of information and the quantity of information is not so much the problem in the end it's really to establish what's relevant what's important for the end user uh, considering their context their the language they speak all the areas around personalization and when you take all of this into account sorting this out and establishing the logic and the search engine becomes a lot more complicated. And this is where I would say an open source solution like Solar can show limitations. And first of all, making accessible all the content that people want to expose. 
but also understand what's relevant because relevance is a subjective concept. Something that's uh, relevant for me as an end user is not going to be necessarily relevant for you as a customer. So how do you address that with hardwired rules and logics that's established beforehand, all those, uh, those manual ranking rules? It's very difficult to do that and to think of ahead of, of everything you need to account for. And this is where our, our machine learning technology helps and uh, can show a lot of value to those uh, customers in, in search of a better search experience. Essentially, you know, Coveo captures out of the box all the behavioral activity happening around search and navigation. So the clicks, the queries, page views, and all of that to understand how people are interacting with the information presented to them and understand what's a, a good experience, what's a successful search journey, for instance. And thanks to the, that data capture and the machine learning working with that set of data, we're able to say, well, you know, a lot of people are actually clicking on the result that's on the second page when they're searching for this, or they're clicking on the, the first recommendation presented to them in that context. So maybe I should try to promote that on a global scale, all in the optic of replicating as much as possible successful outcomes without human interaction. And that's the beauty of it all is that our clients don't need to be aware of that problem, quote unquote, in order to fix it. Machine learning detects it automatically and will implement a solution seamlessly, sometimes even with other clients being aware of it. Yeah, one thing I want to hit on real quick as well that you mentioned at the beginning, JC, which is a really good point, mm -hmm. is, you know, with solar, it is more of a coding solution. And, you know, the market and just you know, reality with digital right now is everything's going to more of low code, you know, configuration. So with Coveo, if we just take like a simple like listing page, you know, a marketer can simply go in there after it's set up add a new page, determine what content type comes back, configure their facets. They can even configure all their business rules all by themselves without developers. So I think that's probably, you know, just on the outset of a project is a huge benefit to simply even just limiting like the level of effort on a project, right? It's just putting the power in the marketer's hands. So I think that was a really good point you made there. Yeah. Well, I think that a lot of companies are trying to find the best of each solution. You know, we see that a lot with different, uh, headless solutions coming in or, uh, you know, more, uh, I would say, segmented solutions that we see out there and be able to put all of that together to get the best of each category. I think that Coveo is a, a leading solution for everything around search. And Solar is not a bad solution per se, but a lot of our clients are coming to us and saying, I don't want to be a search expert. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to invest the time and energy to build this expertise from scratch and manage all of this manually, right? It goes down to focusing on your strengths, for example, I don't know, selling shoes or whatever service our clients are in and delegating this important part of the user experience to, I think, a solution that's been proven to work well for the last 16 years. But uh, it's definitely a matter of good or bad fit. We think that we're a good fit in those types of instances where, you know, people need that relevant experience, have vast amount of information and need to uh, augment search capabilities on their website. Yeah, and even expanding on that, JC, if we, you know, when we talk about you know, letting you know, the marketers and these teams scale, I think the one thing we haven't mentioned yet is Coveo actually has the distinct capability of tracking each individual unique user, you know, what they've searched for, what they've clicked on before and after. And you, know, you can even add custom actions like when they added things to their cart. You know, pair that with Sitecore's experience profile and XDB where Sitecore's keeping track of all the other information, you can marry the two up and have a really powerful platform. But you did mention something else I want to hit on too, is you know organizations don't need want to become search experts, right? So with all this data you're collecting, you know Coveo is actually behind the scenes taking all this information into account. And then for the front end user, you're manipulating the order of the search results to provide more relevance results for the end user, which is extremely powerful, right? So it's great to have that running behind the scenes. You'll definitely get more ROI and conversions by having your just out of the box, I'll say algorithm running. Um, but, you know, marketers do have the ability to manipulate that themselves. So some really good points there, JC. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it goes back to one of the key value proposition we have is to kind of put more power in the hands of marketers, which I think aligns really well with what Sitecore as the CMS does as well, right? The ones who want to control and give a specific user experience, quick relevance in certain ways with open source solutions like Solar, it can become difficult to do that by themselves without, you know, a computer science degree or an IT department heavily involved in, in this operation. So we try to put that into, a, again, a business uh, friendly interface so that, you know, with drag and drops, with uh, different tools directly in the platform, we can really empower this type of user to do a lot by themselves without 
having to submit a, a request to IT every single time they want to change something. Yeah, and it simply just gives the you know teams the ability to scale. And I'll go on a bit of a tangent here, especially I've been uh, been on the services and project side of things. You know, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like you know, these projects, you know, the search piece of the project, especially, are typically left to the end. And you know, yeah, you know, when we talk about you know, a lot of sites are 20 to 40% search heavy from the global search bar. You know, roughly we say a third are searchers. Um, that's a huge aspect to leave to the end of the project. So for the listeners out there, if you have a project or about to embark on a project like this, like a digital transformation or site redesign, you know, planning for search uh, at the beginning is definitely well, uh, well recommended. Mm-hmm. And then especially pairing that with a tool like Coveo would definitely be very powerful. I think that, you know, as individuals were quite shaped up by the way we interact with organizations in our personal lives. So you, for instance, uh, I'm sure you've bought something on Amazon, especially over the last year and a half, right? So what do you do when you land on Amazon? The first thing you do is not navigate around and, and try to click on different promotions. Sometimes, yes, perhaps, but personally, when I go on there, I've got a very specific idea of what I want to purchase. And Search is the one thing I use when I let, uh, land on that website. Same thing can be said, I think, said with other platforms or, I mean, even Google for that matter. So I think our expectations as consumers is also reflected in the corporate world where I do want to use search as well when I land on a client website or any other website where I need to do business. Of course, we're biased, you know, we're a search company, but people having a, a rich search experience definitely allows you a lot more control and allows you to bring the experience on par with the expectations people have around what Google have done, what Amazon have done. No, for sure. And you know, all this talk of shoes and commerce and Amazon, that does lead me to another topic I wanted to talk about today with you, JC. And you know, I've been noticing Coveo's been making large investments and just simply resourcing and capabilities into the commerce space. So let's talk a little bit about, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about, you know, some of the capabilities you know, e-commerce clients can leverage from Coveo. You're right. You know, as uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we started off as a an enterprise search company. Over the years, you know, we saw the applicability of our solution in other areas such as e-commerce. It's uh, actually a great time for for our solution to to explore that area, given that a lot of people have been forced because of the pandemic and everything to refocus their business model around a more digital experience, getting a bit away from the traditional brick and mortar channels. And so we've developed basically a way to, to address that market and to have a product that's specific to the imperatives of an e-commerce project. i um, giving you an example of a couple of features that we've developed, but you know, a, a catalog manager becomes something that's quite essential in e-commerce. When you have something in the on the informational side for a traditional website, I would say you have one version of a document and that's mostly it. I'm giving you an example around the shoe store. Again, if you have an e-commerce shoe store, you might have different variants of the same type of shoe. So, and what about pricing? Maybe you have a special member account that gives you a discount on everything. We need to be compliant with that and respect pricing entitlements, which we do now. Availability of product. This pair of shoes is sold in this specific mall, but not in this other one. So a lot of nuances have come up that we needed to address. We now do. We have a COVID for commerce specific product, which can actually be merged with other types of solutions like COVID for Siteforce and and Salesforce. It gives a new flavor to our solution. And I think that we were able to align quite well with the business objectives of the clients in this area, namely around improving conversion, average order value, the ability to self-service, lowering cost of uh, supporting clients online and so on. So that's uh, that's what's been going on in in the last few months and and years around e-commerce at COVID. That's great. I think the timing for you guys especially has worked out well. And, you know, with the times we're in, there's a lot of companies now going direct to consumer. Maybe they've been historically B2B and now they're going direct to consumer and they need, you know, what all tools do we need in their stack? And I definitely think there's some other features I wanted to mention as well. You know, if you're if you have things like color, like color swatch, right? And users are typing in red and maybe your color is rose, you know, your platform can definitely help the user match to what they're exactly looking for. And even like with the B2B manufacturers. You know, there's a lot of data issues with those types of clients and their type of catalogs. And you know, even like things like matching inches with IN to inches to maybe two parentheses, you know, those those are some very powerful things that can help users find what they're looking for without setting up manual rules, basically to get them to the product they're looking for. So definitely some very yeah. powerful pieces there. Absolutely. And uh, one thing I personally learned across my years of working with e-commerce is uh, the nuances between B2B and B2C, which, uh, you know, 
initially getting any e-commerce can seem like a single big entity, but I think you'll agree that they have different specificities, different ways of working, different types of users. So interested to, to have your take actually on that. Did you, uh, what's your biggest point around what's specific to B2C versus B2B? What, you, what have you seen with uh, clients on your site, for instance? The one interesting thing is, is we have more and more clients that are both B2B and B2C now, hmm. where you have to address the needs for both personas, we'll say. So one interesting way we've leveraged Coveo is a client I'm thinking of, a very large association that you know sells training to organizations, but maybe selling books or individual products to consumers, is we now need to be able to identify both groups. I think the one thing that the Coveo product does very well is matching individual users to what other people like them have done. So for example, we have a user that comes to the website, they've added two products to their cart, and then eventually they leave, right? The next user that comes and follows that very similar journey, we can start promoting and making product recommendations and start manipulating. And Coveo itself is actually doing the manipulation of like-minded products that they can buy or should buy. So what we've been seeing is everyone should go through the, you know, the we'll say the methodology of you know creating your personas, creating the conversions they need for both groups. But I think the Coveo product specifically on these search pages, especially these listing pages, does a very unique and good job of being able to identify what products and what type of product bundling goes with each other. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying because we're actually seeing a lot of differences around exactly that in B2C versus B2B. In my experience, you know, B2C tends to be anonymous users getting in, not authenticating themselves, maybe going in to purchase one solution and then you're not going to see them again for maybe a year, a year and a half, but a vast quantity of, of profiles and people getting in, you know, whereas B2B, we tend to see a bit more repeat business, people that, that need to log in very specific entitlements, specific discounts given for types of profile and so on. And the first instance, you know, elements like uh, machine learning are critical because first of all, you have no other ways of driving relevance without properly authenticated users. You know, we can only rely on the wisdom of the crowd to understand what has been done across the entire customer base and try to do an educated guess around where what should be interesting for this specific user based on that. Whereas with B2B, I think uh, where it's interesting because we're able to comply, of course, the entitlements of each uh, specific users, but we're able to address relevance for, for example, for this subset of user. So, you know, I'm a large distributor getting in, logging in your portal. What did others in my exact situation have done as well? and try to address relevance perhaps a bit more specifically than my profile. Yeah, those are all really good points. And, you know, talking about on the authenticated user, I mean, especially with the past year and a half, the need for portals and self-service has come up a lot. You know, and if we do have a login, we do have what we call a known user, explicit versus an unknown user, which is implicit. If we have mm -hmm. that explicit user, we can create things like gated content, and you know, even unique content on a search page or a listing page, like specific customer specific pricing. So we can all configure that through your platform. So it's all extremely handy to have, um, especially with now where organizations are going, which is more the self-service known model. That's right. Beyond the features themselves, what's been uh, positive about this all is the impact, the business impact of having good self-service, for example. It's uh, kind of weird to say, but the ability to find easily content on the website by oneself is seen to have a direct impact on how expensive it is to serve those users in terms of support, access to information, and so on. You know, if we do the simple exercise of saying, well, if a client goes on the website, searches for something, tries to go around, cannot find what they're looking for, they're going to end up calling you in somewhere, contacting you at the very least via support portal or a hotline or whatever and those can become really expensive to manage you know it can be a hundred dollar a call plus depending on the nature of your business whereas self-servicing with just robust search and good information presented to them on a website is perhaps a couple of cents per call so very rapidly you see that the concept of case deflection or being able to serve that information rapidly and efficiently is yielding a lot of gains on the business side as well just thanks to good information sharing. For sure. And one, one other thing I was going to ask you is, 
other new use cases you are seeing. So you mentioned case deflection, which is a super interesting one. We have a lot of clients, and there's a lot of clients out in the space that are both Sitecore and Salesforce. So can you maybe expand on that Salesforce piece with case deflection and uh, how that has been basically morphed with your product? Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, created a product with our technology partner, Salesforce, uh, a couple of years ago, and have actually explored a variety of use cases depending on the, the, the solution our clients are using. One of the most popular ones I would say is a uh, Salesforce service cloud and a community cloud in which Coveo is actually able to provide value on both sides of the, the funnel, essentially. Uh, on one side, you have a user that's logged in the community that wants to submit a support ticket because he has a problem with uh, whatever product he's purchased. You know, he just wants to, to fix a problem. Well, right at that point, when the user is logging in and submitting the request, typing in the issue, what's the specific problem, Coveo can actually be running queries dynamically to try to find a solution even before the case is submitted. And that's where we're talking about case deflection. Oftentimes, this is going to be driven by machine learning and based, again, on things that have been working with other users. So if I'm looking for a I don't know, a burnt pixel on my TV uh, and I'm summoning a case. Well, have you tried doing this and this and that? And perhaps that's going to work. <laughs> uh, I'm not a, a professional in electronics or whatever, but you know, uh, <laughs> maybe that person's going to find a solution to their problem and fix it by themselves, which is the concept of case deflection. You know, we've avoided the creation of a case thanks to proactively pushing information to users. And if we go beyond that, you know, I've Still submitting my ticket. The uh, the recommendations there didn't fit exactly the, the problem I had in mind. On the other side, agents by themselves in Service Cloud can be supported by Coveo as well. And saying, well, this internal knowledge base article has been seen to help with problems along the same nature or led to a case being closed and flagged by an agent as saying, well, this was particularly useful to help me solve this. So, you know, on both ends, we're able to inject relevance and good information to either help users self-serve or help support agents find a solution more rapidly with the information that they have as an organization already. That's great. I think this whole concept of the self-service we've been talking about expands well beyond e-commerce as well and the things we've been talking about, right? You know, financial, banking, fintech all really kind of come to mind, which is something I wanted to touch on real quick. We recently started working with one of the largest mortgagers in the United States. And you know, one of their requirements is, hey, we want to search through tens of thousands, which if you add them all up, probably hundreds of thousands of pages and chapters from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, even our own internal documentation. We want to return relevant chapters to the users. And really the only way you can do that, if you have an engine like Coveo that can actually go through, break those up into individual chapters, then we can actually personalize the chapters to what role is actually doing the search. So you, you mentioned the case deflection route. That same use case can be applied to even a public-facing website. I definitely think the connectors in the way Coveo can index and kind of take in all that content is extremely helpful. Absolutely. The notion of self-service is applicable to almost everything. You know, Our roots are, are in enterprise search and employee portals. And that whole concept is applicable in that reality where employees are able to find more easily information they need. They won't go and disturb a, a colleague to get the information they need and in a matter of minutes are able to find a solution to their problem instead of relying on other people and disturbing them in their work. We're talking about self-service in a completely different use case, but it goes down to that, right? Good information that's enabling someone to do more by by themselves. Absolutely. Right information at the right time to the right person, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that's right. And on this note, obviously, Coveo is well positioned with their product to, to move forward with the ever-changing environment. But I'm just curious, what, what can you share, JC, on you know, where the uh, Coveo product is going? So uh, in a lot of different directions at the same time, it's not a bad thing. It's just that we've got the uh, opportunity to be applied to a lot of different scenarios. So, for instance, you know, I would say that one of the main areas we're developing is the, the concept of stitching experiences together. Historically, clients have been approaching us for a specific project, a specific deployment they had in mind, a site for project, deploying a new website, and we've been able to, to serve them and help them with that specific project. But over the years, our customer base has grown, and with the satisfaction rate we're seeing with our clients, They've asked, how can we apply Coveo elsewhere? So for example, with an employee portal as well. 
or uh, we are coming up with a new e-commerce store or uh, a service portal. Well, the great thing is that we actually allow for this expansion fairly naturally, uh, both on the technological side and contact contractual side to make it easy for clients to have relevant experiences everywhere, uh, everywhere around them while relying on a single platform. And the beauty of that is that if, for example, I already have Cover for Site or on my website running, it's great, but you know, I'm, I also have the support portal running on service cloud and, and community cloud. Well, what you learn on the website, all the insight, the information that, that is learned from machine learning on the website can actually be applied to make the support experiences smarter and richer as well. With that connectivity, the fact that you know, you're know you relying on a single intelligence hub, you can have Coveo become smarter all around and connect the dots between experiences so that we're really getting close to that customer 360 view that a lot of people have been talking about for years, but is very difficult to apply in reality. So I would say that's one of the key areas of investment uh, at Coveo, really the vision that we're trying to accomplish. But of course, we, we can go in a lot more details if you drill down into each specific use cases around website, e-commerce, service, and, uh, and workplace. No, that's great. I definitely think you know the one main aspect to have these implementations and just these digital experiences be successful is just the need for data. I definitely think what you just mentioned will help address that. And I got a unique sneak peek um, of what Coveo has in store from the Coveo MVP lunch is that, you know, a lot of you know, organizations that are on site or maybe another DXP platform, you know, these DXP platforms don't have, you know, great out of the box reports, right? You can write custom reporting, you can create custom dashboards and Power BI and Tableau. Well, that's always great. But I think what the Coveo product can be super well positioned for is integrating a third party BI tool into the platform yeah. to create these custom reports. So I think that's the stitching you were referring to. And I've been uh, very uh, happy to have seen the preview for that. So definitely a very excited to see where that goes. Yeah. And if we, uh, we, we can actually put words on and, and names on those if you want. Uh, what you're referring to is probably the uh, Snowflake and Tableau integration that we have and that's coming up. So essentially, we were talking about delegating what uh, <laughs> solutions, what they do best to someone else. Well, we've always been very data driven, but of course, some companies do exclusively data and Tableau is a great BI tool. So we've essentially found a way to uh, directly integrate Tableau within Coveo so that we can expand and really augment our analytics native capabilities and actually speak with a lot more ap applications out there, you know, thanks to those uh, solutions added to the, to the Coveo portfolio. It's, uh, it's very exciting. It allows us to do a lot more on the reporting side, especially around the commerce uh, conversion channels and so on. So yes, that's quite interesting as well. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. I wasn't sure if I was able to say the name of it, so I'm glad you clarified that, JC. But <laughs> definitely some very exciting <laughs> things ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change gears here a little bit, JC, with the time we have left. So you know, there may be listeners on the show that have been using Coveo for many years. They're on a legacy version. They may even still be on Coveo for on-premise. What would your advice be to them in regards to upgrading and how to better take advantage of the Coveo platform? As a matter of fact, you know, we've been working uh, for several years with our on-premise solution, as most of our clients in that situation know, the solution is being deprecated as of this uh, December of this year. But I would say that one of the main advantages of switching is really uh, getting access to all the machine learning features. That requires a whole lot of data and a whole lot of computing power to work. So it does require us to be cloud-based. Just overall, the uh, ease of use, I would say. With Coveo and Premise, you know, we were often dependent on a lot of uh, infrastructure points that are beyond our control. So we've tried to simplify this, remove all the pitfalls, all the performance requirements that we needed beforehand, and have a, an easy to deploy, easy to maintain solution. And there was just no way around the cloud. So I've, I've got to give it to our CTO and our executive team. They've made the a courageous decision to go cloud at a point where a lot of companies weren't too sure what to do with this. Time's given them a reason, of course, and I would say that it does simplify quite a bit the Kobe experience, both from a deployment admin perspective, and our team is absolutely available to help in that transition, make sure that our clients are they're taken care of, really, with uh, organizations such as American Eagle as well. You guys have seen quite a few of these projects as well. 
So uh, we've got all the resources we need to ensure a smooth transition and make sure that you're capturing the full value of Coveo nowadays and not just a fraction of it. Some really good points there, JC, and especially for the listeners that may be on on premise, I definitely think Coveo has morphed really well with the transition of technologies, right? You know, previously on premise, Coveo is now a full SaaS solution. So no more manual upgrades, no more manual infrastructure. You'll get the product updates when Coveo releases it to the SaaS platform. So definitely probably one of the top three reasons to go cloud to go to the new versions of Coveo, right? Just simply ease of maintenance. And I think you definitely hit the other nail on the head is, you know, the machine learning, the analytics is definitely probably another huge driver. So definitely some really good um, points on why to move from on-premise or a legacy version to the newest versions of Coveo. That's right. So JC, I think this is a pretty good stopping point for today. We discussed quite a bit today on today's episode. You know, we covered a plethora of topics. Yeah, I'd love to have you back on the show. I'm sure the audience really appreciated your candor and um, some bit on the Caveo product roadmap. Greatly appreciate your time. Thanks for swinging by the Psycho Water Cooler to discuss your experiences. And we hope to have you on again soon, JC. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, John, and uh, see you next time. Thanks again to JC Dumont from Caveo for joining us today on the Psycho Water Cooler podcast, a casual conversation between colleagues and peers centered around all things Psycho. I'm your host, John Price. And until next time we meet at the water cooler, be sure to subscribe to the Psychor Water Cooler podcast today, wherever you find your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios, with special thanks to executive producers Renee Nelson and Julia Klepich.